I think new patches create um, kind of reinvigorated interest in the game, which excites viewers to watch and players to play business and IP. And then the summer home in, in Spain, you know, that's, that's the dream. A villa. A villa, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> CIS players. CIS players. The player is naive enough to not represent himself, then he will, you know, potentially get screwed over. And yeah, you can say that's a problem, but Dota, like, I, I mean, the world is not fair, right? You have to you you have to take what is yours, and you need to represent yourself. And if you're not going to do that, people will take advantage of you. Hello, everyone. We play TV here. My name is Arseni, and today with me is Peter PPD Dagger. Hi, Peter. Hey, how's it going? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Excited to play some Dota finally. Uh, finally? Finally. We've, we've had these winter vacations. You know, we haven't played, it feels like forever since we've had official matches, and I'm starting to get a little bored. So, uh, how's the Bukovel? Bukovel? It's pretty cool to have a tournament at a ski resort. I mean, besides the four hour drive from the airport, it's, uh, it's pretty fun to have a you know, a little winter vacation destination here. I'm a snowboarder myself, so I'm, uh, you know, fighting the urge to neglect my Dota responsibilities and join everyone else up on the mountain. Have you tried it yet? Not here. Uh, I was actually just on a trip. I did a ski trip up in Michigan um, during Christmas vacation. So mm -hmm. uh, I got to go a little bit then, and I'm itching to go again already. Great stuff. Uh, okay, let's get back to the subject, the Dota. The Dota. Uh, the Dota. Um, what, uh, let's get straight to the point. What do you think about the DPC system, the minors, the majors, and how uh, do you think it, does it work well today uh, with the, all the changes that Valve made this uh, summer? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a pretty serious question to start the interview. I think kind of the whole point of everything is just to keep people interested inside of Dota. Dota kind of has this problem or this blessing and this curse via, called the International, where a lot of people who watch Dota only watch Dota two weeks of the year during August at the International. So as a result, we've created the DPC to kind of tie in the other third-party events that happen throughout the year to incentivize viewers to watch and teams to play. And um, I think that it's, you know, it has pros and cons. I think that obviously no system is, no system is perfect, but I think every year um, or every two years, right, we kind of had the same thing last year as this year. I think people are trying to think about ways to improve that system for years to come. Uh, do you think, uh, how, how can it be improved? Wow, that's, um, I haven't really spent too much time thinking about it, to be honest. I've been, I used to be really invested in trying to create change inside of Dota, and I think a lot of it was, I don't know, I felt like I was, a lot of times I was on an island trying to get stuff done by myself, which isn't so easy, especially when you're a player inside the scene. Um, nowadays, I'm kind of just like sitting back and, just focused on playing and doing my best. Um, there was a while when I was on EG when we were at the top and it was like, what's next, what's next? But now that I'm not winning majors or internationals, I need to focus on getting myself back to that status before I can start busying my mind th with other projects. Maybe you need a u uni union, like, you know, the professional Dota players union? Um, yeah, maybe. But I think that the hardest thing is you're asking a lot of Dota players to uh, wear two hats. You want them to be a Dota player, but you also want them to be a businessman or a part of this players association. And I would say most players don't have any interest in the business side of esports, nor do they have an interest in collaborating with others to improve their ecosystem. I think everyone's just way too distracted with not, not I, don't, I wouldn't say people are too distracted. I think people just are distracted with bettering themselves and their teams to perform better at the international, which you know, not last placed at the international is $100,000 per player. So it's, um, it's pretty hard to convince people not to only focus on that. Uh, speaking about the businesses, you, uh, as some sources tell, you've gained a lot of money in your career, only by prize pools. Uh, and also you tried to start a league. Uh, but speaking about the investments, what do you, if that's none, uh, if you're not offended with that question, what do you, uh, invest in or you just save money like in banks uh, no I, I just i don't save money i have a financial advisor who handles most of my my investments and things like that i just bought a house in the states so that's a little bit of a real estate investment i guess you could say um 
I would love to buy more properties, but as an esports player, my kind of location is oftentimes temporary. Mm -hmm. I've moved many, many times in my life uh, in these last six, seven years as being a Dota player. So currently I'm trying to locate more in Stockholm, but we decided to play NA this year because Europe was just way too, di way too hard to qualify to events in. Um, but I'd like to get back to Stockholm, maybe buy an apartment there or something. A cozy apartment in Europe, that's a nice idea. Um, or a big house, as you wish. Yes, uh, the, 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 the work home in Stockholm, you know, business, NIP, and then the summer home in, in Spain, you know, that's, that's the dream. A villa. A villa, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's then speak, back, get back to Dota, and the, about the recent patch. What do you think about it? How it, it, does it hurt Dota, or is it okay? It makes it better. I think I think every patch is good for Dota. People like to trash on the patches because it's the contrarian, edgy thing to do. But I think new patches create um, kind of reinvigorated interest in the game, which excites viewers to watch and players to play. And I think that those things are both, you know, equally amazing and great for Dota. For me, it's it's a new patch to explore. I've never been somebody who's been incredibly angry at a patch. Sometimes you know, I'll be kind of mad about maybe some OP hero that's in my pub games, you know, like the you know, the Void Spirit and the Snapfire who aren't in captain's mode but are in ranked matchmaking. Not my favorite thing, but it's fine. It's fine. It's it's all in good fun. And um, no, I, I think the patch is great. I, I, love, I, just, I think there's no better time to be a position five. I get to farm more. I get more items, more gold, more experience. Um, I think the outposts are still a little tricky. Uh, we removed one of the shrines with the, one of the shrines, which I'm a fan of. I think the second shrine is kind of just becoming like a little bit of a teleport spot for Roshan, which is which is okay. But I, maybe they just removed the healing part of it because I think it's like kind of extra. But isn't that OP that one side has a uh, their woods shrine and the other side doesn't have their woods shrine? I haven't really felt like a huge difference. I think the, those things are mostly just for Roshan being able to buy back, port back in for that Roshan fight, which is such a huge uh, part of most games nowadays. Why do you think that oven posts are tricky? I'm just, I think that the game, it puts the game on like this very, um, kind of like on this timer where you're constantly moving to the next objective, whether it's an enemy tower, Roshan, an outpost, uh, destroying a shrine, going for high ground. The game kind of becomes like a little bit um, like uniform and not predictable, but I don't, the game kind of forces you through these paths, whereas I prefer the game to be much more open, which allows for players to be more creative in ways that they choose to win the game. And I think outposts kind of work against that in a lot of ways. You know, Heroes of the Storm used to use this. I, I don't know. I don't no, know. No, you Go never ahead. played. Uh, so in Heroes of the Storm, uh, uh, players had to deal with the circumstances. They had to new timings of when the mega creeps in special locations sure. bound and some stuff. Uh, and some people say that this killed Heroes of the Storm because there was no freedom at all and players had to do stuff to win. Just like uh, you said that uh, you like freedom more. Ice Frog wouldn't do that to us. He's too good of a leader. Uh, you know, True Sight is coming uh, in very short time. Uh, what do you think of the past international? How uh, had you it? How did I've... you have it? As a previous champion of the international, I think it's incredibly disappointing to have a repeat winner. You know, when we saw the when that lower bracket final when LGD got eliminated, I think mm -hmm. we're all all the previous TI winners were a little bit disappointed. Besides Liquid and OG, um, seeing OG win again was not really a big surprise. I think at the group stage, you know, we played against them. They were in our groups, and we played against them, and you could just feel how strong of a team they were. And um, they've got a nice system and a nice mentality amongst themselves that enables them to have good teamwork, which is, which I've learned is incredibly important um, over the years. Having that team that you know is capable of working together and pushing yourselves to your maximum potential at the international is kind of the most important thing in Dota. Um, a lot of times, I think teams don't put in as much work. Or obviously, teams don't put in as much work through during the rest of the season as they do at the international. Uh, which I think a lot of times during the regular season, the teams that have the higher individually skilled players often excel. Uh, Team Secret is a great example. They're last year, especially like Nisha, Mid One, Zai, Yapsor, and Puppy. Like, hard to say those guys aren't like top three at their positions. Um, 
and they dominated throughout the season. Same thing with Virtus Pro. But when you go to the international and it becomes more, you know, it's not only about being individually skilled, but it's also about being skilled as a team. And I think that's where it's really important to have those that good mesh of personalities and um, I don't know, good strategy, good teamwork, everything. And I think that that really shined. And that's kind of what I've learned from watching them win twice these past two years. And it's something that I'm working towards and aspiring to to do in my own teams. OK, thank you. Um, um, so uh, do you have you ever thought of uh, creating your own team? And I, I mean, from the uh, if there were players available every player player available who would you choose wow um not not uh counting your current teammates or past teammates sure wow let's think there's a ton of great players and i, I could i could take multiple choices for lots of different positions i would say let's see carry um dun, 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 dun. Well, let me go with i'll start with for three, I would go with, for offlane, I would take mind control. Mind control, okay. Easy, I, I got to play with him once, so I really know what he's all about. For mid, I would take Sumail. Mm -hmm. I'd make him stop playing carry, make him go back to mid. For one position, I would take... Uh, Nisha, no. No, no, I think, I think like a... Maybe paparazzi, you know, English-speaking paparazzi or Ame even potentially could be pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure about the other Western carries. Sorry, I'm drawing a bit of a blank when I'm trying to think of all the okay. all the guys. Anna, right, uh, obviously yeah, sure. would be, yeah, it's, maybe Anna would be number one. And then who am I missing? I'm missing four Just position. Four. Number five, of course. Four, I would take, I would make Zai go back to four. Yeah, yeah I, I love playing with Zai. He's such an amazing talented player he plays all of the heroes um, and uh, that's that's a really nice tool to have you know you pick some random hero that's usually a mid laner and he goes I think you can play this as four position and he goes not a problem and for the fifth position the, if you're um, if you're the coach oh, or the manager not me yeah yeah um, not me so you were the first well I thought that's kind of what the whole point was <laughs> I was surrounding myself with people to carry me uh, five position dun, 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 maybe um, okay, I'll just take no tail, right? No, okay. Yeah, why not? Okay. okay, sure. Seems like a good captain. What about CIS players? Who? CIS players. CIS players. <laughs> we'll cut that off. Uh, you can, <laughs> I, I didn't would, like I his willing, reaction. I'd be willing to play with uh, no one from, no. from yeah. VP as a mid laner. I think he's super good. You've heard that. Uh, okay, and the last question is about, uh, let's say, Tricky one um, about the salaries. Uh, we've heard that um, Ninjas in Pajamas had some stuff with the salaries, but we're not asking about that. Uh, we're asking about the, um, you know, uh, how can players manage uh, this stuff with the salaries? How they are not, how, how can they not be uh, tricked or something? How can they uh, maybe defend themselves. How, defend themselves? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think it's through education. I think you as a player have a responsibility to yourself to learn kind of how all of this works. I've been very vocal. I've even said on Twitter if anybody has any questions. I have a lot of experience on all different sides of esports. and I've always been willing to like uh, answer questions that people might have, but I'll say something like that and nobody will even message me. So obviously that either means they have it figured out or they don't care to figure it out. Um, how this should be solved? Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's the player's problem. It's not anybody else's. There's tons of different parties in esports that are all trying to find a way to make money, and they're going to cut and take shortcuts where they can. And if the player is naive enough to not represent himself, then he will you know, potentially get screwed over. And, yeah, you can say that's a problem, but Dota, like... I mean, the world is not fair, right? You have, to, you, you have to take what is yours and you need to represent yourself. And if you're not going to do that, people will take advantage of you. Okay, that's quite find a fair. Find a lawyer, right? If that's the smart thing to do is to find a lawyer who can represent you if you're not willing to represent yourself. How can a 16-year-old uh, boy or a girl uh, cope with this stuff? 
solve this problem. Well, if they're not capable of locating and hiring a lawyer for themselves, they could ask their parents or they could ask uh, whoever their guardian might be to find somebody that would be willing to assist them. Um, a lot of times, eSport teams and players will kind of sign whatever gets thrown at them the very first time because they go from a position of not getting paid to getting paid, and that's, very, very, that's a very, very exciting time. I was exactly the same way. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't say it's like, I don't think it's somebody else's responsibility to care for the players. The players should care for the players. So, um, such a, have you ever made such a mistake when you were younger? Well, I think you can always sign a contract and think, oh, yeah, maybe I was worth more. Or you can sign a contract with the team for a salary that was, you know, maybe low, but maybe that's what you deserved in that moment. And then, th like, like, EG was a great example. Um, when I first started, our salary was, you know, quite low. But in that first year, we ended up getting third at the international. And yeah, you bet, our, when our contract was over, when we re-signed, our salary went up. I think my very first contract, I was playing Heroes of New Earth, and I was making $100 a month. And I think in the f maybe those, was like the six years that we've been playing now, like our salaries have gone up, I don't know, like 15 to like 30 times that. So it's been, um, it's been a wild ride. So it's been, it's been good. You know, uh Kuro had a problem with signing for Team Liquid again uh, because of the salaries. Uh, do you think that the Dota player's salaries are too high or too low or... Or maybe you don't have an opinion on that? <laughs> uh, well, it, that's a I think that's a lot bigger question of how do you feel about esports. And I think in Dota it's especially hard for team organizations to uh, make a profit. and. As a result, we've seen lots of investor capital be injected into esports, which has allowed esport teams to basically compete with each other for um, incredibly inflated salaries. Dota is, is is pretty inflated, but I think even like League of Legends and Counter Strike are way higher salaries than that game. Um, Dota is, and still is, incredibly player favored, mostly because of the international. Uh, team owners don't have access to the one true money maker inside of Dota. That money goes to players, and that money goes to Valve. And I think team owners are often looking for ways to better monetize inside the game. And I think that players will negotiate and they'll, they'll ask for, or they should be asking for, as high as salaries they think they can possibly get. Um, so are they getting paid too much? No, I think they're getting paid like whatever they agreed to get paid. If they're not happy with what they're getting paid, they should say no. There's, there's lots of hungry, um, Businessmen, third parties that want to create esport organizations. So you can find somebody, you know, like Nigma, Team Secret, OG, are all player started organizations with somebody who was willing to kind of front them, right? And um, now look where they are. Nigma has a lot of things to do yet. Sure, way. but somebody was willing to believe in them that they would eventually get there. So they pump, pump money into it at the very beginning. Say, hey, you know, we're going to, this is an investment, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to invest in you guys, and hopefully down the lines, you can start turning a profit. And we'll see if that happens or not. It's a lot of esport teams are trying to get to that point, and only the strong will survive. Sounds fair, like in life. Definitely. Um, maybe let's um, speak something more positive. If you want to say something to your fans, to greet them, to say hi or something, you can do that? Yeah. Um, I appreciate anybody who's out there watching the minor. I think this is, uh, if you're watching the minor, you are among the most elite Dota fans, right? Like I, I ran my NIDCL league and that was like, if you were a serious North American Dota viewer, you watch that league. And if you're a serious Dota viewer, you're probably watching the minor. You, you're probably just sitting there, you know, itching to watch the major. And this is kind of like a little appetizer before the big games with the big dogs. But there's a ton of great teams here. I've played in uh, two minors this year. This will be my second minor this year. I played in three minors last year, and the level of Dota that is played at the minors is pretty comparable to, oftentimes comparable, especially in the final days, to the level of Dota that's played at the major. The teams that are playing here are the ones who just barely missed out on being at the major, and uh, one of them will be lucky enough to join the others in Germany. Okay, thank you very much, Peter. Uh, it was very good to meet you here.